Project Emporia provides a bird's eye view on the topics and news that go through Twitter with an easy to use interface. The great joys of the 21st century is, is in part the vast amount of information that people are producing, the commenting upon changing the world, commenting on new technologies, new ways of sharing your social life, um, new, new, new ways of being. But part of the burdens that brings is, is knowing where to look, knowing who to listen to, knowing who to read. And one of the things that you can devise, and what Microsoft have been devising, are tools that, 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 that intelligently guide the, the, the reader, if you like, the user, to to content they find useful and that, that, that combines a little knowledge about the kinds of things they're interested in with some analysis of the kind of contents that are available and brings them together uh, uh, like, uh, like a marriage. So Project Emporia is an alpha project that we did at Microsoft Research together with um, Fuse Labs. It's, it's a reader and a, for content um, on Twitter. It, it opens up the entire information that flows through Twitter to, <clears throat> to people who are not yet engaged on there. There's F Sharp is a functional programming language, and that means it's highly suitable for expressing solutions to mathematically oriented programming problems, such as taking data streams and doing mathematical analyses over the data streams, and ranking, and, and the sort of uh, manipulations you have in analyzing data coming from the web today. Project Emporia is an example of what we'd call a data intensive web service, website or web service. And that means uh, it is acquiring data from various feeds such as Twitter for example. Uh, and it's performing a sophisticated uh, mathematical, mathematical analysis over those data streams. What's interesting about the real-time web is that, that I believe it's at the same pivotal point that the web was, was 15 years ago. When the World Wide Web first was created, people actually didn't need any search, people didn't need a, a filter down based on personal relevance or relevance of subjects in itself. Because the web had a coverage problem, there wasn't enough content web pages available that, that could uh, answer any, any textual query I could do. Later on, in the late 90s, now web search is the main, main operation that allows you to get on top and not feel overwhelmed by the information in the World Wide Web. The same, I believe, is true for the real-time web, with Twitter being one of the most prominent examples of the real-time web as a distribution service of information. So one of the key ways that Emporia will evolve is to incorporate new kinds of data streams into the analysis uh, that's being performed and into the results that are being presented to the user. Some of these data streams might be blog feeds or uh, feeds coming from Facebook uh, <coughs> or feeds coming from RSS feeds. And as these feeds are incorporated, it's uh, we need to perform new kinds of mathematical analyses over the data and we need to transform the data into the kind of shapes that are used internally in the Project Emporia implementation. And f -sharp is a perfect language for implementing these kinds of transformations and for specifying the mathematical analyses that need to be performed over this data. In the 18th century, um, people discovered uh, the ease with which you could sell the written word, and they would make up stories, print them on sheets, and sell them on, on the street corner. And Samuel Johnson, who was also delighted by the written word, complained that a lot of these grub street publications, as he called them disdainfully, were, were, were full of fibs, just made up stories purported to be news about the world. When in fact, it wasn't news about the world, it was just fibs. So it, that led, as about the background, to the invention of the newspaper. The newspaper is an editorialized set of grub street publications, and you can f think of the 18th century as analogous to, to the contemporary world because Grub Street publications were like blog feeds or Twitter, uh, uh, Twitter feeds. Some good, some bad, some made up, some copies. The question is how you can marshal them to make them useful material and make them into, for example, a newspaper or a blogger paper or a twit Twitter paper where there's some editorial control over it. It not only helps you to um, group uh, group rich content such as web links, photos, music, into existing and well known categories such as technology, entertainment, business. But it also helps you to get on top and on top of that information um, flood um, by by filtering it depending on things you like. So it's 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 actually a reading experience that tailors towards your individual information needs. 
um, it's a discovery tool. It's a web. Uh, it's also a discovery tool in contrast to web search. So it actually allows much like a newspaper today. So the newspaper, you, like this one, you, you you wouldn't have an exact information need, but it's the most recent information that's today chosen by a small set of editors. Um, in a way, what we're trying to do is bring bring the recency and the relevance of newspapers, but fueled by by the Twitter pipeline, which is just not accessible to many people.